Welcome everyone, join us today as we delve into the life of one of the most impactful singer-songwriters of the 20th century, Harry Chapin. From his early beginnings to his rise to fame, we'll explore his passion for music, and his tireless humanitarian efforts. So let's dive in. Harry Forster Chapin, born December 7, 1942 in New York City, United States of America. The son of percussionist Jim Chapin and Jean Elspeth, the daughter of renowned literary critic Kenneth Burke. Harry was the second of four children, his brothers, Tom and Steve, would also pursue careers in music. The Chapin family's American roots trace back to Samuel Chapin, who became the first deacon of Springfield, Massachusetts, in 1636. On his mother's side, his great-grandparents had immigrated in the late 19th century. After his parents divorced in 1950, Harry's mother Jean took custody of her four sons while Jim Chapin, a drummer for big band era acts, spent much of his time on the road. A few years later, Jean remarried Henry Hart, the editor of films in Review magazine. Chapin's first structured exposure to music came through trumpet lessons at the Greenwich House Music School under the guidance of Mr. Karezik. His younger brothers Tom and Steve sang in the choir at Grace Episcopal Church in Brooklyn Heights. It was there that Harry met Big John Wallace, a baritone with an impressive five-octave range who would later become his bassist, backing vocalist, and on-stage partner. As a teenager, Chapin performed with his brothers, with their father occasionally joining in on drums. He graduated from Brooklyn Technical High School in 1960 and was inducted into the school's Alumni Hall of Fame in 2000. Chapin attended the United States Air Force Academy briefly and later enrolled at Cornell University, but did not earn a degree. Originally, Chapin intended to pursue a career in documentary filmmaking. He secured a position with The Big Fights, a company owned by Bill Caton that managed a vast collection of classic boxing films. In 1968, he directed Legendary Champions, which earned a nomination for an Academy Award for Best Documentary. However, by 1971, Chapin had shifted his focus to music. He formed a group with John Wallace, Tim Scott, and Ron Palmer and began performing in various nightclubs across New York City. In 1972, a fierce competition erupted between industry giants Clive Davis at Columbia and Jack Holtzman at Elektra over Chapin. Ultimately, Chapin signed a lucrative multi-million dollar deal with Elektra Records, one of the most significant contracts of its era. This deal afforded him unlimited studio time and various other benefits. That same year, Chapin released his debut album, Heads and Tails, which achieved international success, selling over a million copies. The album's standout track, Taxi, became a top 25 hit on the Billboard Hot 100 and reached the top 5 in Canada. American radio personality Jim Connors played a crucial role in promoting the lengthy single, keeping it on the charts for 16 weeks and making it the number one requested song for 10 consecutive weeks. Chapin's performance of Taxi, on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson, generated so many viewer calls that he was invited back the following night, marking the first time in the show's history that an artist was called back consecutively. He also performed Taxi on one of the inaugural episodes of the Midnight Special, hosted by John Denver. When asked if the song Taxi was based on real events, Harry Chapin explained. It's emotionally true, if not literally true. I had been working in the film industry on and off for years and hit a rough patch. I got a hack license to make ends meet, and while waiting for it, I learned an old girlfriend had married a wealthy man instead of pursuing her dream of becoming an actress. I imagined a scenario where I'd be driving a cab one night, and she'd get in. We'd recognize each other and realize we both abandoned our dreams. Billboard ranked Taxi as the 85th song of the year, and it earned Chapin a Grammy nomination for Best New Artist. Later in 1972, Chapin released his follow-up album, Sniper and Other Love Songs. The title track, Sniper, is a semi-fictional narrative about the University of Texas Tower shooting. The single, Sunday Morning Sunshine, charted on the Billboard Hot 100 and became a top 40 hit on the Billboard Adult Contemporary Chart. Although the album was less successful than its predecessor, selling 350,000 copies, it featured the beloved Chapin anthem, Circle. In 2004, a double album combining Sniper and other love songs with Heads and Tails was released, including previously unreleased tracks from both albums. Short Stories, Chapin's third album was released in 1973, selling over a million copies and included the international hit W.O.L.D. This song tells the story of an aging disc jockey who sacrificed his life and family for his career. Narrated from the DJ's perspective, the song captures his conversation with his ex-wife. The inspiration for W.O.L.D. came from American radio personality Jim Connors, who Chapin heard calling his ex-wife while in the WMEX studio. 
The track became a top 40 hit on the Billboard Hot 100, a top 10 hit in Canada, and charted in the top 10 and 20 in various other countries. Other notable songs on the album, though not released as singles, include Mr. Tanner, Mail Order Annie, and They Call Her Easy. Mr. Tanner was loosely inspired by two New York Times concert reviews of baritone Martin Tubridy, published in 1971 and 1972. In 1974, Chapin released his most successful album, Verities and Balderdash, which sold 2.5 million copies, propelled by the number one hit, Cats in the Cradle. The song narrates the story of a father who has no time for his son during his formative years, only to have his son grow up to be similarly distant. This song earned Chapin another Grammy nomination for Best Male Pop Vocal Performance and led to his induction into the Grammy Hall of Fame. Verities and Balderdash reached number 4 on the Billboard 200, with the album's second single, I Wanna Learn a Love Song, peaking at number 7 on the Billboard Adult Contemporary Chart. The song recounts the true story of how Chapin met his wife, Sandra Chapin. Another standout track from the album, 30,000 Pounds of Bananas, became highly requested despite not being released as a single. This song offers a semi-fictional account of a truck accident in Scranton, Pennsylvania, involving a load of bananas, loosely based on a real 1965 incident with truck driver Gene Seske. Other notable tracks on the album include Shooting Star, Halfway to Heaven, and Six String Orchestra. In 1975, Chapin released his fifth album, Portrait Gallery, which featured the top 40 Billboard adult contemporary hit Dreams Go By. Though this album sold 350,000 copies, it did not achieve the same level of success as its predecessor. Additionally, Chapin ventured into theater, writing and performing in the Broadway play The Night That Made America Famous, which garnered two Tony Award nominations and two Drama Desk Award nominations. Chapin had solidified his status as one of the decade's most popular singers by 1976. He released his first live album, Greatest Stories Live, which sold 2.1 million copies. Despite a management change at Elektra Records that resulted in minimal promotion for his subsequent albums, each still sold at least 250,000 units and charted well. As the decade ended, Chapin focused more on touring than producing hit singles, but he continued to release an album annually. His earnings reached an estimated $2 million per year, equivalent to approximately $11.75 million back in 2017, making him one of the highest paid artists globally. While his album Dance Band on the Titanic did not sell well, it was named Album of the Year by the Times of London. In 1980, with his Electra contract expired, Chapin signed a one-album deal with Boardwalk Records and released his ninth studio album, Sequel, which quickly became one of his fastest-breaking albums. All three singles from the album became hits. The title track, Sequel, was a top 25 hit on the Billboard Hot 100, serving as a follow-up to hit, Taxi. The second single, Remember When the Music, reached the top 50 on the adult contemporary chart, and the third single, Story of a Life, charted on the bubbling underchart. The album ultimately sold 500,000 units. Chapin was determined to leave a lasting impact on Long Island, envisioning a community where the arts thrived, universities expanded, and humane discourse was prevalent. In the mid-1970s, Chapin dedicated significant time to social activism, particularly in raising funds to fight hunger in the United States. His daughter Jen explained, he viewed hunger and poverty as a disgrace to America. Chapin co-founded World Hunger Year with radio personality Bill Ayers and returned to music with the album, On the Road to Kingdom Come. In 1975, he also published a book of poetry titled, Looking, Seeing. Over half of Chapin's concerts were benefit performances, supporting causes such as saving the landmark theater in Syracuse, New York, and food banks. Proceeds from his concert merchandise went to support World Hunger Year. Among those he assisted was filmmaker Michael Moore, who received funding for his independent newspaper startup, The Flint Voice, through Chapin's benefit concerts. On October 15, 1977, Chapin, along with Gordon Lightfoot, James Taylor, and John Denver, performed at the Four Together concert for World Hunger at Olympia Stadium in Detroit, Michigan. The nearly three-hour concert, broadcast live, raised money to combat world hunger. Chapin's commitment to social causes sometimes created tension within his band, as he donated about a third of his paid concerts to charitable efforts, often performing solo to minimize costs. Chapin's widow remarked after his death, with only slight exaggeration, that, Harry was supporting 17 relatives, 14 associations, 7 foundations, and 82 charities. He wasn't focused on saving money, he always said, money is for people, so he gave it away. Despite his musical success, Chapin left little money behind, making it challenging to sustain the causes for which he had raised over $3 million in the last six years of his life. The Harry Chapin Foundation was established as a result. 
Personally, on November 26, 1968, Chapin married American poet and songwriter Sandra Gaston. They had two children together, Jennifer and Joshua. Their courtship is immortalized in Chapin's song, I Wanna Learn a Love Song. Sandra now chairs the Harry Chapin Foundation, continuing his philanthropic work. Their son Josh, along with other family members, is also involved in the foundation. Chapin often spoke of his artistic family background. His father Jim, brothers Tom and Steve, and daughter Jen are all musicians. His nieces, Abigail and Lily Chapin, perform as the Chapin sisters. Throughout his career, Chapin's brothers occasionally joined him on stage, especially during live performances. They played with him before his solo career began and were credited on several albums, including Greatest Stories Live, Legends of the Lost and Found, and Chapin Music. Tom and Steve continued performing together, often with Harry's former bandmates, after his passing. Country singer Mary Chapin Carpenter is Chapin's fifth cousin. On the afternoon of July 16, 1981, Harry Chapin was driving on the Long Island Expressway, heading to a free benefit concert at Lakeside Theatre in Eisenhower Park East, Meadow, New York. At 12.27 p.m., his car began to slow to 15 miles per hour with its emergency flashes on, weaving from the far left lane to the center and back, before being struck from behind by a semi-trailer truck. The impact crushed the rear of Chapin's 1975 Volkswagen Rabbit, ruptured the fuel tank, and dragged the car several hundred feet. Good Samaritans pulled an unconscious Chapin from the burning vehicle and he was airlifted to Nassau County Medical Center, where sadly he was pronounced dead at 1.05 p.m. from internal bleeding. Chapin's widow later won a $12 million negligence lawsuit against Supermarkets General, the owners of the truck. Chapin is buried in Huntington Rural Cemetery in Huntington, New York. His epitaph, taken from his 1978 song, I Wonder What Would Happen to This World, reads, Oh if a man tried, to take his time on earth, and prove before he died, what one man's life could be worth, I wonder what would happen to this world. And there you have it. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the remarkable life and untimely death of Harry Chapin. His legacy as a gifted storyteller, passionate humanitarian, and dedicated artist will continue to inspire us all, and future generations for many years to come. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos just like this. Take care and bye for now.